friends once again welcome back to the automotive basic session I am Soma Shekhar in previous video we have discussed about wired and logic basic concept of a CAN network and now we are going to discuss about stuffing and de-stuffing basic concept of our CAN so the agenda for the day is message coding here we are going to learn what is message coding or encoding and how it is done and why is it necessary in CAN network the second topic NRZ coding technique next the drawbacks of NRZ and how to overcome these drawbacks stuffing and de-stuffing and why do we need this stuffing and de-stuffing and what is it we are going to learn and the final thing is we are going to discuss the stuffing and de-stuffing thing with the animated analogy dear friends so what do you mean by message coding or message encoding let me tell you the answer is simple in CAN network message coding means system of rules for information or data conversion for example consider the data is in analog form you want to convert it into digital form so in a CAN this is accomplished with the help of message encoding how is it done using NRZ encoding so the next question you may ask why message encoding is required in CAN network the message encoding is required just to ensure the secure data transmission over the communication channel here the communication channel is our CAN network now you might be thinking about what is NRZ and encoding the answer is simple let's begin with the encoding encoding means as I already explained you guys in the beginning of this slide the process of converting one form of data into another form for example analog to digital conversion that means in a CAN network conversion of various voltage levels into ones and zeros that means dominant and recessive bits the second one is NRZ NRZ is abbreviated as a non return to zero friends in digital communications NRZ is a binary code in which ones are represented by a high positive voltage level you can see in this picture this is the signal to transmit a one that means to transmit recessive in in CAN network so in a CAN network if the transmitter wants to transmit a recessive bit means the signal will be in this manner that means high positive level during the bit interval friends the bit interval is here from this line to this line here you can see in the picture the next similarly the binary zero is represented by a zero level so here the zero level is indicated as a low so you can see in this picture this is the signal to transmit a zero or dominant bit in a CAN network you can see the same in this picture so you can see in this waveform so this is the recessive bit and this is the dominant bit here you can see zero or dominant bit is represented as a zero holds and the recessive bit is represented as a high level that means high voltage friends can uses NRZ encoding with bit stuffing after five consecutive bits what is this we will see in upcoming slides now you may think why NRZ why not RZ and Manchester coding techniques are used in CAN network let me tell you the simple reason 
each line coding technique for example return to zero or z or manchester has its own advantages and disadvantages but depending on the application we have to choose the line coding techniques in our digital communication techniques and also the nrz is having one vital behavior what is that in nrz the voltage level remains constant during the bit interval and if you are interested to know more about return to zero and manchester coding techniques please google it because we don't want to waste our time here so friends this is just a short notes about the non return to zero please go through this so it will help you lot friends next we are going to see what are the drawbacks of the non return to zero line code or nrz encoding friends as you all know in nrz the voltage level remains constant during the bit intervals so this leads to long sequences of bits of the same polarity here you can see in this picture the transmission the transmitter is going to transmit the long sequences of bits so what will happen so here you can see the transmission of long sequences of bits to receiver are coming from transmitter so this is these are the long sequences of bits coming from our transmitter so due to this what will happen over the can bus no voltage changes on the bus for longer duration you can see from year to year there is no voltage changes so there is no voltage changes over the bus means of course there will not be any falling edges here you can see in this picture the falling edge is only in the beginning but here this is not the falling edge and here anyway we do not have any falling edges so what do you mean by falling edge means so the transition from recessive to dominant bit so this is called as falling edge so this you people will understand in uh, my upcoming videos for time being remember falling edge means transition from recessive to dominant so what will happen next there are no falling edges means obviously there will be no resynchronization between the receiver and the transmitter because of these reasons receivers of a can network might not be in synchronization with the transmitter hence the receiver loses the track of bits that means receiver lo loses the track of bits means it may interpret the dominant bit as a recessive or recessive bit as a uh, dominant misinterpretation of data because of induced noise how we can overcome this we will see in next slide you can see here the transmitter is going to transmit a long sequences of bits but these are recessive bits in this picture also you can see in the beginning anyway there is no falling edge so after long sequences of bits receiver finds falling edge for resynchronization here you can see in this picture here i am just giving a short notes about the problems of nrz you can see long sequences of bits of same polarity you can see in this picture no changes in voltage level for longer duration as i already said no falling edges for resynchronization and synchronization between sender and receiver may lost that's it from this slide next we will see what is stuffing and destuffing the very very important concept of a can so friends let me tell you the first we'll start with what is the purpose of bit stuffing the main purpose of bit stuffing in a can network is to ensure the 
synchronization of all the nodes now we will see what is bit stuffing means during transmission of a data bits a maximum of five consecutive bits may have the same polarity in a CAN network suppose if the transmitter finds more than five consecutive bits of same polarity the transmitter will insert one additional bit of the opposite polarity into the bit stream friends the same I am going to show you in the coming slide with an illustration sorry with an animated illustration so in this slide I have just given the short notes about the stuffing and destuffing. So, destuff what is destuffing? Destuffing means the re receiver checks the number of bits of same polarity and removes the stuffed bits from the transmit uh, received bits. Sorry, from the received bit stream. This is known as destuffing. Please go through this slide, friends. Now I am going to show you how stuffing and destuffing happens in our CAN network. Here you can see the transmitter is having 13 bits of data and the same has to be transmitted for receiver. So you can see the stream of bits to be transmitted to the sorry the stream of bits to be transmitted for the receiver you can see uh, five zeros preceded by a four recessive bits and these four recessive bits are preceded by three dominant bits and these three dominant bits are preceded by one recessive bits so next thing how transmitter is going to transmit this stream of data bits to receiver means transmitter will look for five consecutive bits of same polarity once it finds the five consecutive bits of same polarity it will introduce the stop bits here you can see the bit the data bit one is transmitted here and the second one is transmitted similarly up to data bit five the five data bits are transmitted after that the transmitter is going to insert a stop bits that means the sixth data bit is not transmitted at here you can the sixth data bit is going the transmitter is going to transmit after the stop bit this is our stop bit here then the seventh data bit next eighth data bit next ninth data bit here the transmitter will consider these four data bits as well as the stop bits since the stuffing rule says the maximum of five consecutive bits may have the same polarity that's the reason the transmitter is going to introduce another stop bits into the bit stream that is the reason only nine data bits are transmitted up to here after that stop bits next the tenth data bit will be transmitted then 11 then 12 then 13th here you may ask here we have only five consecutive bits of same polarity but here we have the opposite polarity why do we have to in a uh, why the transmitter has to inter insert the stop bits because the rule says after five consecutive bits of same polarity the transmitter has to in insert one stop bit into the data stream that is the reason the transmitter has inserted a, a stop bit here next we will see what receiver will do that means what will happen at receiver side simple the receiver looks for the five consecutive data bits after five consecutive data bit the receiver will remove the stuff bit that means this is as I already said uh, this is called as destuffing so at the receiver side now you can see the transmitted bit sequence 
as received legitimately. That means the five dominant bits preceded by a four recessive bits and these four recessive bits preceded by three dominant bits and these three dominant bits preceded by a one recessive bits that means receiver has received the legitimate data